Shalom, shalom, shalom. Go ahead and jump into it. <clears throat> yeah, I want to play this video too, by the way. Unbelievable. These guys from uh, Mississippi. Yeah, they got some heavy spirits on them. Heavy spirits on them. So I wanted to play that video. I got to get these glasses replaced. Damn. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to play that video of these guys from uh, Mississippi. Al Alvin and Simon. <clears throat> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, let's get ready to jump into it. Justice, just a little bit here. All right, let's do it. Hey, Shalom, beloved. Shalom. Barak Atta Yahawah. Barak Atta Yahawah Shai. Barak Atta Yahawah. Barak Atta Yahawah Shai. Call Halayim La Yahawah. Bahashem Yahawah Shai. Bahashem. Kadash, all praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son, and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. <laughs> Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, trusting in our eternal root, the spirit of prophecy. There is a very distinct difference between the Lord's elect and the two thirds of the house of Israel. I'm going to say that again. There is a very distinct difference between the Lord's elect and then the other two-thirds of the house of Israel because the elect are watching for the signs of prophecy, which means the elect truly believe in the prophetic book. This book is magical when we have the gift of faith to go with it. So our faith complements our hope. Our faith complements our hope because we're watching as well as praying. <coughs> so all the events on the earth were calm, cool, and collective, listening watching, being circumspect, which means to look about around us, looking for the key events that are to come, which mark the return or give us a gauge to know how close we are to Yahweh Shai's return. So the elect truly believe and therefore reads or the mic of five and two. Many jakes hear the videos and they don't really believe. They're just latching on to something that they perceive as a new fad in black culture, a transitional phase of a new fad or a new style, a new fashion. But we're supposed to put off the old fashion, the old man and take on a new identity, a new walk, based on our faith. Let me see if I can find that. Let's go to, um, <clears throat> one moment. Let's go here. That's okay, I'll come back to it. So the scripture is worded, putting off the fashion of this world, right here. 
Let's go to 1 Peter 1 and 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahawashai Hamashiach as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. So being fashioned after the spirit, which means we must be born through the spirit in order to be fashioned like the spirit that was made flesh, Yahawashai. So if we're meditating on or consuming spiritual manna, then we are what we eat instead of clinging on to the old man. So we ought to be fashioned like the spiritual man, Yahawashai, the in all, the all. So the men must be moved by the spirit to put their hands on the plow. How I many have ever been to a cookout or a gathering? You got men with beer bellies just sitting around waiting to eat. They didn't help set the table. They didn't unfold the chairs and set up the chairs. They're waiting around with a beer belly in their third trimester, just waiting to eat and yelling at the man on the grill. When are the ribs coming? You see? <laughs> so we ought to be eagerly anticipating the return of Yahweh Shai and diligently laboring to meet him in the sky. Let's go to Micah 5 and 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee, shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler of Israel, ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So this is talking about Yehoshai. He was prophesied to be born in Bethlehem, which is the bread basket. So he is our bread of life our manna from heaven. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth hath been from old, from everlasting. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. So Yahweh Shai must be planted, must be our blueprint, our role model by which to follow or emulate. Because he's through him is that noble vine, the remnant. Remember Jeremiah 2 and 21. So that vine is being tendered, nourished, fostered to spring forth again. All of Israel was not destroyed or cast away. So the remnant have hope through the root and offspring of David. Micah 5 and 4. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord in the majesty of the name of the Lord, his God. And they shall abide. For now shall be, for now shall he be great until the ends of the earth. So that root, <coughs> that key vine or that root and offspring of David is our only hope by which to get back unto the Father. Yep, Brother Gabar, I gosh, John 6 and 35. 
And Yahweh Shai said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. So the remnant believe. The remnant have obtained the understanding according to the election of grace. So the remnant are the offspring by blood and born through the spirit of Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, the noble royal house of David. <clears throat> Micah 5 and 4 again, and he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord and the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. So those that don't have the name, they're not being fed through the spirit. They're disconnected from the root, adjacent to the ever-flowing rivers of life. They're separated, cut off, and die in place. Let's play this video. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and play this video. One moment. You will get CHIPT MOTB, which is an acronym for Mark of the Beast. The Invisible God. Well, this got to be the devil, man. The Invisible God is indeed a Grand Maka Mark. Because we will tell you this day the name of the Heavenly Father, the Invisible God. Is indeed a grand Makamar. So when we're separated from the spirit, then we are subject to demonic seduction, demonic possession. There is right hand side possession, and there is left hand side possession. So when we're not grounded in the bread of life, when we're not deeply planted by the everlasting living flow of rivers running water, then we wither away or dry out and die in place. Now they're calling on Makna Mama, whatever the hell it is. I don't know what they're even talking about. So the rivers of living water, the trees or the cedars of the Lord are planted directly to the life source Yahweh Shai. But these men are without him. See, let's go to Revelation 22. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So these men are taking the Lord's name in vain, We're worshiping other gods. So they are cut off from that root of David, Yahavashai, and the river flowing with living waters. So they're possessed by dark demonic spirits. That's why they're getting worse. Stop trying to justify these men. Stop trying to justify them. <clears throat> because they're, they're cut off from the bread of life. Yehoshai. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. A kingdom. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So they just want to get attention. So they don't fear Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. 
That's an effeminate trait to crave attention that much, to worship and exalt a false god, call on a false god. So they love and make lies in order to self-exalt or to become exalted, to be perceived as great for labeling or producing or patenting a new gospel, a new doctrine. So they're trying to make themselves pioneers in a new truth or a new doctrine. But there is no other way. Shalom, beloved, GMS, take heed, Israel. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So these men have opened up their vessel to be seduced by seducing lying spirits. They're, obe they're disobedient rebels. So the Lord is going to open up on these men and kill them. The Lord said, I kill them and I make alive. I make peace, and I create evil. So the Lord is going to bring bad times against these reprobate men, calling on McNabrera. What the hell are they calling on? I guess they can call on Ronald McDonald now. These reprobates says that the name don't matter. So I guess you can call him Ronald McDonald or Burger King. You know, I mean, come on now. Revelation 2 and four, Revelation 22 and 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So the kingdom of heaven is reserved to the Lord's elect, the gates of the city. Shalom, beloved, Barakatha. For without are dogs. Here's another thing. Anybody not grounded in the spirit of truth are animals. Is it not written? They are brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. When the spirit hits you at the right angle, hits you at right at the right angle with the right force, it totally changes your spiritual outlook and perspective on this wicked doggy dog world of feminism, white supremacy, pedophiles, drug dealers, gang bangers, pimps, okay? Did we not read about that? Whoremongers, dogs. So when the spirit hits you just right, you don't give a damn about these scroungy animals, okay? I'm just telling you. Let's read that again. So they're not going to enter into the kingdom. Dogs. Animals. Revelation 22 and 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Did they not Call on a false god. According to our law, the penalty for that is death. Are pimps exalted here in America that sell harlots? Yes. <clears throat> Idolatry is promoted here. Freedom of religion, which is a cesspool for conjuring up demonic spirits. So it has become the habitation of Dark demonic spirits, savages, animals, murderers, idolaters. Brother Anna, GMS Detroit. Yep, Isaiah 56 and 10. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Now, this is getting into these wicked pastors, but it can apply here. 
if they're not grounded in the spirit of truth, then they're, they're in the zoo. They're a part of the animal kingdom. You see, the jungle reminds me of that song in that movie. What is that movie? Lean on me. Welcome to the jungle. We roll every day, something like that. Welcome to the jungle. That's America in a nutshell. Welcome to the jungle. Look it up in that movie, Lean on Me. So these men are not grounded in the spirit of truth, righteousness through Yehoshai. They're not warning the flock. They're not speaking out to help prepare our spirit for what's to come. They're not talking about Bible prophecy, the mark of the beast, the digital see hip, the digital device. See, yay, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand, that cannot understand. So they're on the level of an animal. Somebody post that in Psalms 30, the mule that needs a bridle or the horse that needs a bridle. I think it's Psalms 30, if I'm not mistaken. So when the spirit hits you just right, there is no sympathy for these savages. Zero. They're outside of the covenant. They're outside of the Lord's holy temple or sanct uh, sanctuary. To be holy means separate. So these men are like scroungy dogs that are defiling the Lord's holy place amongst his elect. Is it not written, be ye separate or be ye holy because I am holy? Brother Azan Ha'amah, Shalom Balaam, Barakatha, Proverbs 8 and 36. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So they're like animals being led to the slaughter. And they're leading the flock to the slaughter. Brother GMS, take heed, Israel. Philippians 3 and 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Many of these are jakes that are leading the flock to the slaughter. So they're like grimy, savage, laughing hyenas. That's the wicked women, the laughing hyenas, wearing animal hair on top of their head and bugged out jakes. The day of the simp chimp is going to come to an abrupt end that love their slave master. Look at these, what's that man's name? Amare, what's that actor name? Talking about where our sympathy need to be geared towards. And look up um, that Witherspoon boxer. They have no sympathy for the Lord's elect, his flock. Their sympathy is elsewhere. The workers of iniquity, Brother Azan Ha'amath, 2 Peter 2 and 17. Yep, these are wells without water, clouds. They are carried with a tempest to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. So these men are abiding in the shadow of ignorance and wickedness. They're in the doghouse, for lack of better words. They're in the animal shelter, if you will. Here, Amare Stoutmeyer, his sympathy is dedicated towards the workers of iniquity. His sympathy is elsewhere. It's not abiding in the doctrine of who the Lord said are his people. My sheep hear my voice the children of Israel. That's where our sympathy should be. And to take that a step further to the elect of the house of Israel that are being moved by the spirit of truth. See? Revelation 22 and 16. I, Yahweh Shai, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. So we're either grounded in the Lord's garden, 
connected to our life source, Yahweh Shai, or we are a dry vine that's going to die in place and wither away. We either being brought to life or we're the walking dead or we're the dead vine or the dead thorns and briars and weeds to be picked up and cast into the fire. The Most High does not deal with gray areas. We either in his temple or we're outside of the temple through Yahweh Shai. And the spirit and bride say, come and let him that heareth say, come and let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. So the Lord's plant or his cedars, the cedars represent the elect, are planted right beside the running living waters, being constantly fed. Hence, teaching as well. So the elect don't feel right if we're not reading or hearing the word daily. Luke 9 and 23, please. Luke 9 and 23, please. The elect feel famished when the word is not being read or listened to. The elect get uncomfortable when the word is not coming out, when there's no prophecies coming forth. Revelation 22 and 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And that major plague is the lake of fire. Whosoever taketh the mark of the beast shall become rotisserie or charcoal grilled jakes or burnt up wicked ones, evil doers, and the other nations that are in bed with this beast. Or if you call in on other gods or committing idolatry or deviating from the doctrine. So the lake of fire is going to be set off by these nuclear missiles. Brother Gabar Ayash, Luke 9 and 23. And he said to them, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So this is not about following our flesh. My voice is dry as hell right now. I don't have any energy. And I ask for your prayers with that being said. But this is denying our flesh. What makes us comfortable sitting back eating a tub of ice cream with them M&Ms poured into it. Okay, like Nutty Professor. And did exercising your biceps with a damn Snickers bar. So resisting the lust of the flesh or the concupiscence of the eyes, but gravitating towards the spirit, being led by that force and drawn into the physical the, uh, excuse me, the spiritual essence, which is power. So that spirit gives us the power to, to keep going, despite what we feel in our flesh, to resist the temptations of what the body is telling us to do. It's hard to be able to resist not feeling well, resist fatigue, to resist that lazy or slothful spirit without help from above. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17, please. The Bible will speak for itself. Yep, this is on my list. Brother Ariyah Chayang, John 15 and 3. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. 
No more can ye except ye abide in me. So being grounded in the doctrine is abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, hiding under the tabernacle of the wings of Yahweh Shai, the angel of the Lord before us that went before the camp of Israel in the old days. So we're hiding underneath him in spirit and truth. John 15 and 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. So the strength comes from above. Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17, please. So the strength from the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to be able to teach, to be able to interpret, to be able to keep going and overcome fatigue, overcoming the lust of our eyes, overcoming that slothful spirit, wanting to give up. Let's go here. See, let's go to uh, what King David said. Let's go to Psalms 52 and 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. So trusting in that eternal vine that is connected to the living waters. So the branches are being nourished daily through the spirit from on high. This is not a earthly empowerment like Black Lives Matter, the Black Panthers. So this is a force that, can be, that cannot be matched here on earth. And if we are tapped into that power source, then our lights stay burning bright our wisdom, because we have that oil of understanding constantly feeding us. Let's go here to Brother Gabar Ayash, Wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17. And thy counsel, who have known, except thou give wisdom, and send thy Holy Spirit from above. For so the ways of them which live on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee and were saved through wisdom. So this is why we got to be linked in to the external power source. We can't do this on our own energy or own strength. When you look at a green olive tree, it's what? What do we call somebody in the military that's new or inexperienced? or unlearned in man's eyes, man's wisdom. They're called green. Let me show something real quick. Inexperience or green. Really, that's what Goliath called King David. You know, who is this cherry? We also use that term, a cherry. So they're not ripened yet. When an olive tree is ripe, I'll show it to you. So this is what we are in the flesh. But with the spirit, we're made ripen through the spirit from on high, which is from the most high. So through the spirit, we're mature. We're age through wisdom. You see, that's a ripe olive tree black, and even darker than that when it's fully ripe. Wisdom of Solomon, I think it's eight and eight, that wisdom is experience. So King David was strengthened through the Holy Spirit. Is it not written, take not thy Holy Spirit from me? So we die when not, whenever we're not connected to the flowing energies of an essence of our Heavenly Father. When a baby is separated from the breast of milk, then the baby dies. Are we not born again? Are we not as newborn babes? Matthew 11 and 25. 
Are we not sucking from the breast of wisdom, knowledge? King David was connected to the breast milk of wisdom, the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter if we're green, if you will, or wet behind the ears, or the proverbial cherry. He's just a cherry. I don't have to listen to him. If he has, if he's anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Anyway, Brother Gabar Yash, Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 8. See? Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 8. If a man desire much experience, she knoweth things of old and conjectureth aright what is to come. She knoweth the subtleties of speeches and can expound dark sentences. She foreseeth signs and wonders and the events of seasons and times. So it don't matter if we are young, tender plant. If the Holy Spirit is on us and we blossom into full-blown cedars full of strength, power, knowledge. Yup. Brother Gabar Ayash, 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Hamashiach. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hereto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now ye are ye able to. See? So we have to start from somewhere, a tender and delicate branch. The Lord is speaking to babes in these last days. My brothers couldn't get it posted, so I'll go ahead and pull it up. Wisdom of Solomon 11, not Wisdom of Solomon, Matthew 11 and 25. Matthew 11 and 25. At that time, Yahweh answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. So it's okay to be a tender green plant, delicate, if we're grounded or connected to the root and offspring of our source of life, strength, wisdom, Stop looking at the flesh. Is the man anointed? If he is, then we got to proceed with caution. Don't swing a sword on the Lord's anointed. Let's go to Isaiah 53, I believe. See? Isaiah 53 and 1. Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. So we can get deceived by looking at the flesh. Oh, he's just a man just like I'm a man. He don't put on his pants no different from how I put on my pants. You see, I'm bigger than he is. I can squat 650 and bench press 430. So why should I look at him as being any different than I? Okay, I'm a Rhodes Scholar. I play football for the NFL. So we got to get out of going off the outward appearance and tap into or tune in to the spiritual vibration that's coming off that man or woman and get out of the big mama. Jesus loves you just the way you are, baby. Come as you are. We got to get out of that or we die under that spiritual Eve, big mama spirit. Bug out. That's why most of our men are all jacked up. Mama's babies. See, let's go back to King David. So regardless of our posture, our image, what we look like, 
are we tapped into the waters in which the spirit is able to continually flow into our vessel, our vine, connected to the root and offspring of that source and strength of wisdom and light. Let's go back to King David, Psalms 52 and 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. So yeah, we might be green or looked upon as unlearned as far as man's wisdom is concerned. But are we ordained or anointed with his spirit? Take not thou thy Holy Spirit from me. Psalms 52 and 9. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it and I will wait on thy name. No, we're going to call on Merkabah, Merbashkabah. What the hell is this? All right, you keep calling on the Grand Puba, and the Lord is going to kill you. Or the Spirit Bear, some shit. All right, or listening to Big Mama. You just come as you are, baby. Jeebus accepts you just the way you are. Continue to get your back beat out. It's okay, all right, to play with baby dolls and Barbies with blonde hair and hopscotch. Jebus loves you just the way you are. The Lord's going to kill you, Big Mama, and your bullshit. All right? I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it, and I will wait on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. So the name is what invigorates us, not just being a monkey or a parrot, but ingesting the faith that his name is power. Are we walking the talk and talking the walk? Do we believe in the spiritual, powerful vibration of the name being echoed around the world? Or are we just being parakeets? So a parrot is not going to be delivered by just repeating what we hear. But have we fully digested and swallowed down the full doctrine or ate the whole roll? My cup runneth over. Is that not written? Or are we just barely getting by? Brother Gabar Ayash, Psalms 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We got to get away from the welcome to the jungle vibration, the dog kennel, the animal shelter of the ways of the heathen and Gentile nations, starting with the two thirds. Psalms 51 and 11, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. So if we're, we're outside of that, holy means separate. So if we're operating outside of a cleansed spiritual sanctuary, then we're in the doghouse. We're in the jungle. We're in the dog kennel. We're amongst the beasts of the field, which the Most High said to be ye separate. So we're on an operating in an animal instinct. Or we're operating in the spiritual vibration of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai pristine, clean, manners, structured, ordered, holy. Let's go here. Jeremiah 17 and 13. So the Holy Spirit orders our mannerisms. I mean, you ever been around a person with no manners? They blow their nose in their hand. And I'm speaking metaphorically. So they're not cleansed from the ways of this world. Still grimy and grungy. Imagine shaking somebody's head right after they just give it a hard blow. And they got a wad in their hand. And like, what's up, dog? So if we're not changing our entire makeup through the spiritual waters of this doctrine, then we're no different from the world. Calling on 
foul, defiled names, other gods. So we're still filthy. Jeremiah 17 and 13, O Lord, the hope of Israel. All that forsake thee shall be ashamed. See, the doghouse, the dog kennel. A lot of Jakes are going in and out of the kennel and trying to come into the house of the Lord with dirty feet, muddy, coming out of a pigsty, wallowing around in other dungeons, wallow, wallowing around, tongue twister. How can you come from a pig's sty and tracking your muddy footprints into the house of the Lord? They filed with the other doctrines. They filed with blasphemous names. They filed with feminism or false Christianity. So you're tracking mud in and out of a pristine white house full of cleanliness, sanctity, or purity, going in and out of false doctrines and tracking that in and out of the house of the Lord. Brother GMS in his likeness, Isaiah 25 and 1. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Beautiful. So the gods of the other nations are idols, spit, poop, swine, mud. See? Let's go here. Brother GMS, take heed. Proverbs 2 and 21. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgression and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. So the Lord's house is only reserved to those that have been washed by the word and have donned the beautiful white garments. So we have a covering of the gospel. We have a covering of his spirit. I mean, how many have ever showed up to a wedding? Everybody's wearing turquoise green or green and white. You show up wearing orange, purple, and pink. The hell is this? Get his ass out of here. So if we're putting on the gods of the other nations, like ham, bright orange sandals, purple shorts, and a turquoise green tank top with a damn soccer ball in his hand. Hello, my brother, my brother. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, no, you don't. There's the door, ham. Coming in here, you know, after getting out of a, a piss shower, talking about where's the, the, uh, the ribs. There's the door. You cannot partake in the supper or the feast of the Lord. Stepping out of a pigsty, the gods of the other nations, <laughs> not clothed or donning the gospel of our power. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Let's go here. Didn't anybody send you an invitation? So the Holy Spirit did not lure you or draw you in, then you came uninvited. Uninvited guests. There's the door, Negro. There's the door or a caveman showing up wearing a damn Greek toga with a damn white scarf or a white wreath around his head. There's the door. There's the door. Brother Gabari Gosh, 2 Peter 2 and 21. Beautiful. For it had been better for them not to have known the weight of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So why put on a white suit or a white gown looking clean, donning the gospel or the doctrine, only to go back or to backslide? 2 Peter 2 and 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. Beautiful. See? So we can't keep 
jumping in and out of different gospels, different doctrines, were unclean, or putting on a covering of a God that our forefathers knew not, that are no gods, all right? Looking like Ham wearing a damn orange shorts, turquoise tank top, and some damn purple sandals. Bouncing a soccer ball on his head, bugged out. So we can't mix and match shoes. If the shoes don't match, they got to go. If the top or the hat or the belt don't match, they got to go. Way back when I used to wear the red and black lumberjack with the hat to match. Anyway, inside joke. So we got to be coordinated in the doctrine of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Coordinate. Let's go here. Jeremiah 17 and 13 again. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. So these are the wedding guests that can drink from the Lord's table, <coughs> the pristine spring water, if you will, that are born again, washed by the word, renewed through the spirit, and strengthened in our faith, a new outlook on life, a new mindset, a new walk, a new talk. If not, we're wallowing around in mud. Jeremiah 17 and 14. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. So the bread or the manna from heaven is what gives us an entire changeover or makeover. And that full change does not come until the return of our Lord in Havashai. Is it not written, he is coming with healing in his wings? I think that's Malachi 4, 1 and 2. But the, the road to recovery starts along the straight and narrow path. This is the road to recovery or healing towards the full-blown changeover in new bodies at the appearance and the return of Yahweh Shai. See, let's go to Psalms 91 and 1. So we're hiding under the shadow of the Almighty. This is a protective hedge where the angels are encamped, encamping around the Lord's house, a holy place, a little sanctuary. Let's go to Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. You can't come against a fortress. It's heavily fortified or well defended. Is it not written that he will defend this house? Is it not written as birds flying? So will the Lord of hosts defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem? Is it not written that he defended the city of David against the Assyrians, savages attacking his house, his sovereign territory? Is it not written so he is our fortress, our defense, our ballistic shield. So when the Israelites occupy the Holy Land, we're not going to need a man-made iron dome missile defense system or ballistic missile shield, the iron dome. When the real Israelites reoccupy the Holy Land or are established there by Yahweh Shai, the birds flying, or the so-called UFOs. <clears throat> yep, Brother Zadok, Shalom, Barakatah, Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. That's our fortress right there. See, 
So we're abiding under the author and finisher of our faith. Show me an author with no name. You bug outs, Alvin and Simon. Okay? Talking about we could call on Manak, Malat, Malat Sebak. Okay. I don't even know what the hell that is. See? Let's go back to this. Psalms 91 and 1. He that abideth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My power in him will I trust. So when King David set up his kingdom, what nation was able to successfully come against the Davidic dynasty of King David before they begin to fall after King Solomon? Not one nation. So Yahweh Shai is going to build back better the waste or desolate place of the ruins of the house of David. Stronger, faster, bigger. Strengthened with the full-blown spirit from the Most High. New bodies. Okay, bright burns are going to be set up, if you will. 144,000 mighty men. Followed by the remnant of the house of David. Under that governing authority. See, let's go to Psalms 80 and 14. Return, say what? Return. We beseech thee, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. Ooh-wee. And visit this vine. Let's go back to what King David said. Somebody is not listening. Psalms 52 and 8. The book of Psalms, chapter 52, verse 8. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. So there is a remnant of the house of Israel. The tabernacle of David is branching out and upwards. You see, fruits of knowledge and wisdom connected to the root of an offspring of the royal house of David, King Yahavashai. Let's go back to that. Psalms 80 and 14. Return, we beseech thee, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and behold and visit this vine. This is the noble tree of the house of David. Whenever you look at a family background or you study its history, you go into its family tree. So Yahweh Shai is a part of that royal house of David being raised up unto his father David pursuant to Jeremiah 23 and 5. Pursuant to Luke 1 68 on down. Psalms 80 and 15. And the vineyard, say what? And the vineyard, which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou made strong for thyself. So Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai is strengthening the noble vine, the noble house of the regal class of the house of David. Kings and priests are being fashioned after the king. Yahweh Shai, who was made in the image of the Most High, Yahweh. And the vineyard, which that, Psalms 80 and 15. And the vineyard, which thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou made strong for thyself. It is burned with fire, it is cut down. They perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of whom thou made a strong for thyself. So we die in place and wither away without the right hand of the Most High. 
which is Yahweh Shai. I thought he was not in the Old Testament. For you Old Testament only bug outs, old wine bottles, getting ready to burst, trying to ingest or devour this new wine. You're an old wine bottle, which are look like leather pouches or look like leather bags. They literally look like bellies made out of like a leather type material. And they swell up when the wine begins to reach its maturity, they swell up. So if you try to pour out that wine and put in a new doctrine or a new wine, these old bellies burst. These old bug outs, dinosaurs, trying to get on the internet. So you T-Rexes, you're not gonna be able to get this, okay? A damn dinosaur trying to log on to the internet or high-speed information highway. You're not going to be able to keep up with your antiquated or outdated fashions. I'm just telling you. Let's go back to Psalms 80 or 17. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, upon the son of man whom thou madest strong for thyself. So will not we go back from thee, quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. So we're being made alive through the spirit from on high, through the manner that was made outside of this realm, heavenly food, if you will. This is what's starting our change. So this is the path to healing or health and wellness, if you will. This is how we're getting well built up from that old, decrepit, boys in the hood, homie type of Negro, the old Afro-American, three-fifths of a man or second-class citizen. So we're being elevated towards nobility of a royal class of kings and priests. Psalms 80 and 18 again. So will we not go back from thee, Quicken us, and we will call upon thy name. So really, you should be able to see the Lord's regal house that are holding on to that name, standing for that name, stiffly, without fear. Brother Azan Ha'amath, Amos 9 and 11, in that day, while I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. So the Lord is reestablishing the Davidic house of David, the Davidic dynasty comprised of kings and priests, the real Illuminati's light bulb, is getting brighter and brighter and brighter as we near the end of the caveman's reign of darkness and terror on the earth. So look up Quest for Fire. They know who they are. And click on images, the Quest for Fire. Look, look that up. I used to watch it as a young boy. So the Lord is, this is his build back better plan, if you will. The new kingdom that's going to be built on the backs of the heathen and Gentile nations. When we read Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 61, our buildings are going to be made with sapphire and rubies and precious pearls and stones, a street paved with gold, with the appearance of see-through glass, but paved out of fine gold, living it up. During King Solomon's time, if a fly landed on a solid gold plate, he would toss it out for his servants to take that plate. Fly landed on it, I don't want it. So it's going to be 100 times better than King Solomon's time when Yahweh Shai returns in all his greatness, power, and majesty, and glory. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai. 
call Halayim La Yehava Ba Hashem Yehava Shai, Ba Hashem, or call Kadash, or the GMS, take heed, Israel. Revelation 14 and 3, and they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. Beautiful. These are the new rulers. These are the nobles of the Davidic dynasty that are that's emerging as we speak as tender plants in our youth. Babes being nourished by the word. Revelation 14 and 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins, these are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits. Got cut off, but I went on ahead and said it. Unto, the, unto God and to the Lamb. So this is the new garden of Eden, if you will. Eden on steroids, the new paradise that's going to be made immaculate. 100 fold, 100 times better than what we've seen in the past in our former life. In the old days, the former days, he said he's going to do better. Let's get it. Let's go here to Ezekiel 36. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody's like, I'm tired of these same old scriptures. Well, there's the door. You can go back and listen to Big Mama read you a bedtime story about Peter Pan, okay, or Harry Potter, or Goldilocks and the, and the Three Bears, or whatever you hell you call it. Ezekiel 36 and 6, prophesy. Say what? Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel, and say unto the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and in my fury, because ye have borne the shame of the heathen. So we were trees trodden down. We were gardens trampled over the Lord's vineyard or his kingdom. Verse 7, Ezekiel 36 and 7, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand, surely, the heathen that are about you, they shall bear their shame. So the heathen are going to be trodden down and become servants and handmaids. All right, cotton pickers or kata. I believe that's what, what they say, kata is what they call them. And I don't know, but I'm guessing that's, I'm pulling that from the movie. What was that movie called with um, Wesley Snipes? Anyway, cotton pickers. That's going to be the other nations. Okay, <coughs> they going into the fields. Ezekiel 36 and 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches. These are the first fruits. A lot of Jakes, when we listen to the scriptures, they're not really listening. Okay, they're thinking about the cookies they got to bake that Eve left her commandments for tonight. Okay, but... The scriptures go together. Well, the kingdom starts with the root of David, Shai, followed by the first fruits. His high-level governing global elites. Ezekiel 36 and 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. We're close. For behold, Ezekiel 36 and 9, for behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown. So the Lord is planting his men. You know, it's like when a new director or new chief executive officer gets in charge. He wants to put his boys in high-level positions. So if we're joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, 
he recognizes his elect men of the throne of David, starting with, you know, David, followed by the 12 disciples, which became apostles. He's going to put his boys in positions of authority. That's the way it is. You think he's going to have a caveman as a high-level director or noble or priest or king? Hells to the nizzle, to the hells to the no, to the hells to the no. So he's going to put those that he knows, his friends. Did he not say that? I have called ye my friends. Come on, man. Woo, wait, see, let's read this. Ezekiel, <laughs> Ezekiel 36 and 9. Go oh, behold, I am for you, and I will turn unto you, and ye shall be tilled and sown, built up, planted as the new rulers on the earth. And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the waste shall be built. Isaiah 14. So all of these fragments that were broken off, or these stones of the lively elect being brought back under that seat of the house of David, the new world order, if you will. So he's ordering his first fruits. That's what? 1 Corinthians 15. Ezekiel 36 and 11. And I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estate and will do better unto you. Say what? And will do better unto you than that at your beginnings, and you shall know that I am the Lord. This is the Build Back Better plan. DJ Donald Duck, this is the Make Israel Great Again. This is it. This is it. Yeah, this is it. We next. We next. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. I don't want to wrap this up, which means Lord willing. Brother Gabar Agash, Jeremiah 33 and 14. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for the elect of the house of Israel, followed by the remnant of the house of David. This is the kingdom. So the nations are joined together of the 12 tribes as one nation. Jeremiah 33 and 15. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. So King David would have to be raised up, and Yahweh raised up unto him. Read Luke chapter 1, that he's going to be the horn of our salvation in the house of David. And Jeremiah 23, verse 5, I believe. So we're getting close. Barakatha Yahawa, Barakatha Yahawa Shai. Barakatha Yahawa, Barakatha Yahawa Shai. Brother Gabari Yash, John 15 and 15. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. See that? So he's going to be like, yo, we boys, you are my kings. You command over 100 cities. You command 50 cities. You're over 1,000 cities. And you, my friend, are over 10,000 cities. Joint heirs. Where am I pulling this from? Well, Romans chapter 8 says we're joint heirs. So we're not going to have to bargain and plea and take out loans to get a lot of land. Have you lost your damn mind? The heathen are going to be our possession. Their land is going to be our possession. Their women and children are going to be our possession. 
We're not going to have to go to some damn auction trying to get a, a, a little small sneeze damn inch of land. Okay, a teardrop of land. Uh, we got to pay $100,000 for one little inch of land. Are you out of your damn mind? You must be out of your goddamn mind. All right? So your Howard Shire is going to be I'm putting my boys up. Good. I'm getting ready to set them up nice. Okay? Stop playing, Jake. Or Sleazy E with your lies. Your brother Azan Ha'amath, Ezekiel 36 and 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel, for they are at hand to come. We close. We are close. Brother Gabar Ayash, so the fruits or the garden or the vineyard, the new Eden, or Idan, version 2.0, the new kingdom, set up first what is first fruits as governors. Brother Gabar Ayash, Luke 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people. So he's doing this for his people. Point blank, period. Luke 1 and 69. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. What are they teaching in these churches? This God loves everybody and the animal kingdom and the dog kennel and the damn bird cage is all going to join together in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. You know, no, 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 no. The Lord is going to preserve his people, the elect stones of the building of the temple of the house of David where he is going to dwell. The other nations are outside of that. Now, they're going to be put to work to help build that. But after that, they'll just be bringing tea, coffee, and, and damn uh, fruit, and fish, and bread, serving, and spring water, waiting on the Lord's chosen from head to foot. Get to work. Luke 1 and 69, and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. Beautiful. So we're getting close. We're getting close. Let's get this, Brother Zadok. Let's get this first. Brother Azan Ha'amaf, Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 21. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. And, you know, this is beautiful. This is a perfect segue to being like Yahweh Shai. And I harp on this a lot. A lot. Not if I can be like Mike, bugged out of his damn mind, but if I can be like Yahweh Shai. See, let's get this. First Peter 2 and 21. For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So if we got on the full armor of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, we're not easily insulted or offended because we're covered by Yahweh Shai, his armor. Somebody calls us a name, hey, so what? Yahweh is the judge and have delegated that authority to Yahweh Shai. So if we're not self-exalted, then these attacks are deflected, bouncing off of us. The darts or the fiery darts of the wicked can't penetrate the armor. The Lord is going to get you. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Or somebody do us wrong. Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai got it. So we don't have to defend in that respect. We're blocking and deflecting attacks, if you will. Was he not spat on? 
lied on, stabbed in the back by Judas. You see? 1 Peter 2 and 21 again. For even hereunto were ye called, because Hamashiach also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was gal found in his mouth who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. And this is the posture, the mindset that we are conforming to. Let's close out here. See, Isaiah 11, beautiful precept, beloved, perfect segue to what I had written down. Let's close out here. Isaiah 11, verse 1. So all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, for this counsel, for this ministry, for the men of the Lord, for the sincere. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. So he's coming forth through the physical spermal bloodline of the royal house of David. Not some angel committing adultery with Mary. Are you out of your damn mind? Are you? You really need counseling if you believe an angel of the Lord broke the commandments of the Most High and committed spiritual adultery or adultery with Mary. Unbelievable. So he's from the physical spermal bloodline of King David, of the royal house or sons of God, Yasharala. So take it a step further. Isaiah 11 and 1. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That stem comes out of a man's loins. Isaiah 11 and 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. This is the new man led by the spiritual instructions, not what we feel or our emotions. Hey, dog, we boys. We boys, you know, we grew up together. What's up with this two-thirds stuff? I want him in this thing too. I've known him since he was two years old. No, if he's off, he's off. We got to stop trying to carry along excess luggage and baggage because we want to make it fit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. So this is one of the reasons why we need an intercessor in Habashai, and why we must be changed spiritually, mentally, physically, morally. We're going to get an entire new makeover to be like a Habershai, pursuant to 1 Peter 2 and 21 on down. Isaiah 11 and 4. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. So the word is going to destroy the wicked and the rebellious house of the two thirds with spiritual power coming back traveling in the greatness of his strength and might and glory with the host of heaven, the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs, 
They did not, did not defend David in the old days like that against the Philistines. Remember the battle against the Assyrians. Did he not defend uh, his servant David in those days? So the tabernacle of David, followed by the remnant of the hopeful elect, is going to be defended in these days by the appearance of birds flying, covering the skies. <clears throat> Let's close out here, Brother Zadok. So get out of the boys in the hood spirit, bugged out. Hey, dog, we boys. If an individual is not walking in the spirit, they are lion dogs loving to slumber. They are animals. Brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. We grew up together. We boys. The hell with that boys in the hood shit. Brother Gabar Ayash, Philippians 3 and 2. Who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he is able to even to subdue all things unto himself. So every knee shall bow, every tongue shall profess that he is Lord. And he's going to take up underneath him those that are going to be made like unto him. The first fruits, his governorship, his rulers, his priests, his kings. The tabernacle of David is being raised up and rebuilt bigger, better, mightier. That will never fall again. Brother Zadok, James 5 and 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. So every husbandman or planter or farmer is eagerly awaiting to reap the fruit of his harvest so he can get paid. So our husband means planter or farmer. What farmer you know don't want to reap the payment or the fruit of his harvest, which is the end of the world, gathering his elect. You tell me a farmer that don't want to get paid. The precious treasure or the fine gold and silver of the Lord's elect. Somebody post that in Psalms 135. And we'll close out there. My voice is through. Not through, but through. Or the men of valor. Shalom, beloved. Men of valor, Las Vegas. Barack and Thoth. Psalms 69 and 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. And I shall not be moved. Woo! So if we're built upon an unmovable wall or a chief cornerstone of the author and finisher of this memorial, Zion or to Zion, it cannot be taken down except or unless the Lord build the house. You see, so we're being built upon the pillars of pure wisdom on top of the works of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. And if we don't build upon Yahweh Shai's teachings, then we just die like the damn Black Panthers, black, ignorant, wicked, filthy. You see, unclean, unholy, or black lives matter. Last I checked, the leaders were pra practicing witchcraft. Practicing witches. So how are we going to be rebuilt back better on physical or secular knowledge, worldly wisdom? It does not fit. Then we must acquit. Let's get that, please, in Psalms 135. Or we can get the, um, in Revelation 14, where he's going to reap the harvest of his labor who he has planted his seed of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding with it. That's probably a good one to close out on. The Spirit is taking me to it. So 
Well, go ahead and get that. I had no idea I would go this long. Revelation 14. When we read it, we'll read it again. Revelation 14. Brother Matazah Lakam, Psalms 135 and 4. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. So the husband gets paid or reaps the harvest by gathering his elect, his fine gold and silver. See right here. Revelation 14, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. To redeem, purchase, or brought back. Every husband or planter, husband means planter, wants to get or reap the harvest of his labor, his fruits, which represent the elect that are blooming, blossoming in these last days. The trees of righteousness, the olive tree, the vineyard, the figs that are blossoming in these last days. These are all signs that number one, we're in the end and Jacob's hand is holding the hill of the revised Roman Empire. The second leg of the revised Roman Empire. Get over here, nigga. So Sleazy E is done, son. Done. No matter how much this caveman wiggles and tries to get away. You're going back into the kennel. Back into the kennel. Reminds me of that video I saw with that Siberian husky looking up. Every time the owner said, get into the kennel, he would go, mm, mm, yeah. well, Sleazy, back into the kennel. From where you came and into the kennel shall ye return. As I'm speaking as a man right now. But anyway, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. Oh, let's get this of the Gemara Ayash. Isaiah 45 and 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So not being defiled by women means sticking to the author and doctrine and finisher of our faith, the word made flesh. It does not mean Jake had to burn in his desire to be with a woman. That's bogged out. So these were redeemed from the world, purchased or brought back. So really already, I don't want to say already saved, but are pre-written in the book of life, if you will. Names are written in the book of life. I have surnamed thee, Yasharala. So the Lord's elect are pre-programmed predestined. There is no free will. Does not mean they have they haven't slept with women. Now they're not in bed with the daughter of Babylon, that's for sure. They're not in bed with the philosophies and the worldly dogma or these different secular religions. That's what they're not defiled with. Does not mean they never bust before. Are you crazy? Okay. I've probably been done lost my damn mind if that was the case. And this is why a lot of these, the wicked, they go into little boys because they believe in that this is a stumbling block unto them. They say, okay, I'm not going to get a woman, so I'll just grab me a little boy. So the, the wicked global elite got little boys with nothing on, serving them fruit and crackers and cheese. 
and $20,000 glasses of uh, bourbon and scotch. You know, these little boys serving him and stuff. See, the Lord's got to bring great major judgment to the wicked global elite, these international cave masters, excuse me, international bankers or puppet masters. Okay? So the tabernacle of David is coming. The tabernacle of David is being built back better, raised up from the graves and from the ruins, the dust of the earth. The pieces are being pulled back together, if you will. The fragments are being gathered, the stones, lively with the spirit and power of wisdom from on high, is being brought back together as one nation, one temple, one building, one priesthood, one kingship under the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Shai. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Shai. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Shai. All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Shai. The tabernacle of David is being raised up. Kwam Yashorala. Kwam Yashorala. Kwam Yashorala. And about the ball. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatham. Shalom. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go.